so the uh, talk of today is monogenic obesity so just a few basic like in uh, more than 2 years of age uh, when we called overweight uh, we call it by if the bmi is more than 85 percentile and less than 95 percentile for age and sex as per the cdc growth charts obese if it is more than 95 percentile for age and sex and extremely obese if it is above 35 kg per meter square or bmi is more than 120 percent of the 95th percentile if the patient is less than 2 years of age obese is if the uh, sex specific weight for recumbent length is more than 97.7 percentile as per the uh, who growth chart so we know that uh, childhood obesity have multiple reasons and today i will be discussing about the genetic predisposition it is one of the cause and there are multiple reasons so uh, the if we come to etiology obesity it has uh, causes like physiological like in this there is normal growth puberty and development and it is pathological in this uh, we have genetic that is monogenic syndrome in which the patient mainly have hyperphagia vision and puberty problems second is the secondary hypothalamic cause in this also there is hyperphagia and third is the endocrine cause in which uh, hypothyroidism ghd turner syndrome is there and in this growth and puberty delay uh, is present so uh, we'll discuss uh, today regarding the genetic monogenic obesity so it's wise to uh, divide it in two forms obesity that is associated with the developmental delay and obesity without developmental delay so in the developmental delay the causes are dominant and recessive in dominant uh, the conditions are pradovilli syndrome fragile x syndrome albright hereditary osteodystrophy bdnf and trk beta deficiency and sim1 deficiency in recessive syndromes there are bardet biedl syndrome tub deficiency alstrom syndrome and cohen syndrome and second one is obesity without developmental delay so in this also there are dominant and recessive in dominant uh, there is mc4r deficiency sh2b1 deficiency ksr2 deficiency and in recessive there is congenital leptin deficiency leptin receptor deficiency and pomc pcsk1 deficiency so we'll discuss one by one and the topic is uh, tough but we'll keep it simple so first we'll come to dominant disorders with developmental delay so uh, just uh, see the happy faces of the child and see the small uh, hands of the child the child is having prader willi so first we'll discuss about that it is the most common syndromal cause of obesity it is due to imprinting error mainly there is paternally expressed uh, genes are imprinted there is deletion of the paternal segment in maximum number of cases even also some cases have loss of entire paternal chromosome with maternal disomy and there is methylation disorder there is minimal balance translocation is also seen so uh, how does patient presents mainly the patient presents with the feeding difficulty and patient has feeding difficulty it improves after 6 months and then uh, from 1 year onwards patient develops hyperphagia and so they gain weight diminished fetal activity is also there hypotonia mental retardation short stature and small hands and feet are there hypogonadotropic hypogonadism obesity sleep disturbance patients has osa also and uh, obsessive compulsive disorders are also seen in this patients so the mainly the diagnosis of prader willi syndrome is clinical mainly 8.5 points are needed for diagnosis and in this disorder ghrelin levels are increased and gh response is diminished in this disorder and the treatment of this disorder is uh, mainly a low calorie diet and uh, mainly uh, exercise and low calorie diet basically psychological and behavioral therapy is needed growth hormone therapy uh, is given in this uh, treatment and mainly we have to be cautious if the patient has obstructive sleep apnea then growth hormone um, 
is not given at that time till the sleep apnea uh, is decreased and then uh, we can give growth hormone it reverses many of the features of the prader villi and clomiphene tritrate is tried in this condition but it's controversial so there are many criteria for it there is major criteria and minor criteria in major criteria mainly there is hypotonia poor sucking reflex that improves with age patient has feeding problem mainly weight gain is poor and then uh, they gain weight after one year and the weight gain is rapid after one year they have characteristic facial features like uh, there is narrow bifrontal diameter there is almond shaped eyes and uh, there is fish turned mouth hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism is seen and uh, the patient uh, has also some minor criteria mainly minor criteria there is reduced fetal movement and infantile lethargy that improves with age characteristic behavioral problems is also there temper tantrum and ocds are there sleep disturbances or apnea short stature is seen patient has hypopigmentation also and mainly the characteristic uh, there is also small hands and feet and narrow hands with straight ulnar border there is eye abnormalities are also seen speech articulation defect is seen there are many additional features these additional features are uh, not needed for diagnosis they if they are present they just increase the possibility of diagnosis and then uh, for the criteria that is for interpretation of the diagnosis um, Within three years of age, then eight points are needed, of which five must be major. And supportive criteria only increase or decrease the level of diagnosis. The for the physiology of the disorder, mainly ghrelin levels are increased in the uh, prader villi, and it is thought that uh, it is the causative feature for the hyperphagia. Next is the uh, Fazile X syndrome in the, the those. category of developmental disorder it is the most common cause of inherited mental retardation and uh, there is unstable expression of cgg repeat uh, cgg repeat it is present on the fmr1 gene and it encodes for fmrp proteins and it negatively regulates protein synthesis so if it is not present then transcripts are over translated and this decreased synaptic strength so there is mental retardation and the patient has mainly moderate to severe mental retardation macro orchidism large ears macrocephaly prognathism high pitch jocular speech is present and there are in the delay in the language acquisition and behavioral problem and in some cases obesity is present with the rounded faces and the treatment is clonidine and carbamazepine and valproate they are tried and they have behavioral modifying effects also and they have anti seizure effects and behavioral modification effects also third one is sim1 deficiency sim1 it is the transcription factor that is needed for the development and the function of the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus there are multiple uh, mutations like translocation deletion are there and in this there is severe hyperphagia obesity autonomic dysfunction like low systolic blood pressure is there and there is speech and language delay there is neuro behavioral abnormality is seen in sim1 deficiency then there is albright's hereditary dystrophy osteodystrophy in this there is germline mutation in the uh, gene as one which leads to reduced expression of the gs alpha and it can be maternally transmitted or paternally transmitted if it is maternally transmitted then in addition to aho there is also resistance to different hormones like pth and trh and others and if it is paternally transmitted there is only aho phenotype and this is pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism in this patient can have short stature obesity is present in 50% there is mild developmental delay round faces brachydactyly ectopic soft tissue ossification that is osteoma cutis can be seen and there is impaired olfaction and uh, there can be bdnf and tr tr k beta deficiency also 
so in chromosomal 11 deletion or point mutation that disrupt brain derived neurotropic factor and its receptor that is trk beta and these mutations are de novo mainly mainly in this type of mutation both parents can have normal weight and iq and child has uh, severe hyperphagia obesity moderate to severe uh, learning disability hyperactivity short term memory impairment and impaired pain sensation now uh, we'll come to recessive disorders with developmental delay so in this you can see the uh, polydactyly the uh, patient has six digits so it is barded beetle and in it can have tri allelic inheritance there can be two mutations in one gene and uh, one mutation in second gene and it mainly involves the basal body uh, and modified centriole is involved in this and the patient can have central obesity mental retardation dysmorphic extremities in which it can be polydactyly syndactyly or brachydactyly there could be retinal dystrophy and hypogonadism is mainly uh, male uh, is limited to male only and there are also structural and renal disease the treatment is that accessory digits they are non functional and they should be excised by orthopedician or by plastic surgeon and there is no beneficial role of uh, growth hormone or testosterone in this disorder in retinal uh, in this barded beetle retinal dystrophy uh, mainly retinitis pigmentosa in seen in all and primary optic atrophy is associated with retinitis pigmentosa in this uh, disorder there is visual deterioration and visual uh, loss is seen by the third decade hypogonadism it is mainly limited to males and there is high prevalence of the congenital heart disease also there are many neurological findings like nystagmus ataxia and hypotonia and the patient has high risk for hypertension prothrombotic state and renal abnormalities but the barded beetle differs from the lawrence moon beetle in that lawrence moon beetle uh, they do not have polydactyly in lawrence moon beetle there is retinal pigmentary degeneration patient has uh, mental retardation hypogonadism and spastic paraparesis with distal limb weakness but without polydactyly and one is uh, dr harsha sorry to interrupt can you just rush through the time it's already uh, running very fast okay, okay. you can rush through your slides Cohen syndrome, it is also very uh, rare. In this, there is mental retardation, microcephaly, uh, there are hypotonia, there is progressive retinochoroidal dystrophy is seen. Means patient has high-grade myopia and retinochoroidal dystrophy. It is the essential feature of the Cohen syndrome and the vision mainly deteriorate early. But um, by 40 years, patient is usually handicapped. And Elstrom, there is also a mutation in the ALMS1 gene. And in this, there is also obesity, retinal dystrophy. In this, there is early loss of central vision in contrast to other pigmentary retinopathies in which there is peripheral vision loss. There is also deafness and insulin resistance is severe in this patient. So they develop diabetes also and hypertriglyceridemia is also seen in this. There is uh, mental retardation is not present and polydactyly and hypogonadism is also absent in this. And in some subset, there could be diabetic cardiomyopathy or hepatic renal dysfunction, hypothyroidism, male hypogonadism, short stature and mild to moderate uh, developmental problems can be seen. And uh, TUB deficiency is also rare in which deafness, retinal dystrophy and um, late onset obesity is seen. Now we come to second class in which there is no developmental delay in which there we comes to dominant disorders. One is the most common that is MC4R deficiency. It is the most common cause of genetic obesity syndrome and MC4R sequencing. It is a part of routine assessment in the severely obese child. The patient has hyperphagia. It develops from the first uh, few years and the Peculiarity is that the patient has fat mass and lean mass. Both is increased in this disorder and the BMD is also increased. Patient has increased in the linear growth. And the important thing is that there is reduced sympathetic activity. Patient can have low blood pressure and insulin levels are high in this condition. And the treatment of the condition is that uh, some patients respond to bariatric surgery, Ruin Y gastric bypass, and uh, MC4R agonist has also been tried in this condition, that is set melanotide. 
एसएच टू बी वन इट इज आल्सो रेयर एंड इट एसएच टू बी वन एस बी नो इट इज इन्वॉल्व्ड इन लेप्टिन एंड इंसुलिन सिग्नलिंग एंड इन इट्स एब्सेंस देयर इज हाइपरफेजिया highly penetrant familial severe early onset obesity insulin resistance behavioral problem aggression is there and there is speech and language delay ksr2 deficiency is also rare in which obesity and the important is that some patients respond to metformin that cause marked weight loss in some subgroup of these patients and patient have reduced basal fatty acid oxidation and uh, recessive disorders without developmental delay in this there is congenital leptin deficiency and there are many mutations in that and leptin deficiency patient complains of hyperphagia normal birth weight patient more fat mass is there and there is reduced sympathetic activity patient can have type 2 diabetes in third fourth decade and hypothalamic hypothyroidism and hypogonadism is seen and important is that there is impaired t cell function more uh childhood infection in seen in this disorder and a uh, patient has undetectable leptin levels and then uh by genotyping it is found that patient has leptin deficiency and uh, subcutaneous metrileptin can be tried in this condition leptin receptor deficiency it uh, mainly it uh, has inability to phosphorylate stat3 and uh, presentation wise they both are similar clinically presentation they both are similar and simil, uh, serum leptin levels may not elevate disproportionately in this condition if there is uh, means truncated extracellular domain of lep are uh, leptin receptor then it elevates leptin levels then there is pomc deficiency and in pomc deficiency patient can present with adrenal crisis and patient can have lifelong glucocorticoid and patient can have pale skin and red hair if uh, there is msh deficiency hyperphagia early onset obesity and cholestatic jaundice and then mc4 r agonist can be uh, has been recommended in this condition also then pcsk1 mutation in this there are many uh, features like uh, there is uh, early onset obesity there is low cortisol there is postprandial hyperglycemia hypoglycemia because of impaired processing of pro insulin to insulin there could be central di there could be hypo hypo and, and mainly there is small intestine absorptive dysfunction it is characteristic then uh, yes uh, will uh, deal about the monogenic obesity just to uh, approach the just a few slides like the guidelines recommend that you just plot on the cdc uh, normative bmi percentiles and then you review the bmi percentile at least annually routine endocrine tests are not required in every condition it is required when growth velocity is decreased genetic testing they should be done if there is extreme early onset obesity in less than 5 years if there is extreme hyperphagia means if there is food seeking behavior patient continuously search for food continuously grazing for food stealing food and waking at night to find the food if there is uh, means if patient is voraciously eating and there are other features suggestive of syndromic form or there is family history of extreme obesity or if it is in less than 5 years then you should go for genetic testing and then you just see if the child is obese by history and physical examination if everything is normal then you uh, see the comorbidities you do lifestyle diet exercise and then you decide for pharmacotherapy and bariatric surgery if there is anti psychotic drug you reevaluate that and if there is any history of physical findings is abnormal then you see where if there is attenuated growth velocity then endocrine causes there if there is cns injury then there is hypothalamic obesity and if there is neurodevelopmental abnormalities or severe hyperphagia then it is genetic evaluation should be done and uh, if there is developmental delay or there is no developmental delay if developmental delay is present then uh, clinical features if suggestive of prader willi go for dna methylation studies if it is not then you do the karyotyping or genetic analysis if there is eye involvement retinal dystrophy photophobia or nystagmus then it is barded beedel alstom or tub deficiency if there is no eye involvement then you can see from the genetic ngs panel and uh, if there is no developmental delay uh, you can do leptin or insulin pro insulin and then you can decide regarding leptin deficiency pcsk1 what features are suggested for it and then there is ngs there is obesity gene panel of 36 genes by which you can see other genes yes it has been associated with multiple complications uh, of obesity 
and then we have to do weight height bmi bp acanthosis nigricans skin tags acne hirsutism edema goiter fundus and uh, we have to see the physical findings of syndromic obesity yes we have to plot and if the bmi is more than 85 percentile patient should be assessed for comorbidities in non pharmacological therapy diet by seeing the bmi you can uh, give the to the last 30 calorie, seconds yeah calorie deficit diet and then exercise and academic screen time should be reduced and psychosocial and social activities watch for in pharmacological therapy if the patient is less than 16 years uh, no pharmacological therapy is recommended if the patient is overweight and you can consider medicine if the patient is more than 16 years or the patient has bmi more than 30 or more than 27 if more one related comorbidity only early start is fda approved for obesity treatment in 12 to 16 years and set melanotide, yes, it has been approved for uh, mainly these conditions. Uh, it uh, it can be tried in these conditions. And bariatric surgery uh, in infants, if needed, there are criteria for it. And uh, mainly to conclude, yes, pediatric obesity, it is mainly ongoing serious health concern. It has basis in genetic susceptibilities and there are several monogenic causes and syndromes in association. Genetic screening is indicated only if there is a specific history and physical examination. If the child is less than five years or there is syndromic features or extreme hyperphagia and endocrine etiologies are rare. And if there is growth attenuation, then you should look for pediatric comorbidities are common and they should be screened. Screening for mental issues is important. And lifestyle modification, behavioral therapy is the cornerstone. Anti-obesity drugs, mainly in pediatric population, they are used in research settings. And uh, the diagnosis of genetic obesity syndrome, it is important because it appropriately manages the child's health. It lessens the social stigma that a child has eaten or family has given. Means we have to counsel the patient regarding the genetic counseling. Genes are responsible and possibility of bariatric surgery could be there. We have to look for consanguineous relationships and there is the family history of obesity or other things we have to look for. So thank you for your patience listening.